okay, now that I've gotten the supplies that I need from that shipment, I can continue with sirens and satellites and make the large size bars. In advance, I prepped four of these seaweed things, just like I did before, and I also have four of these mermaid tails. So I'm going to be working on those. The first thing that I need to do is pull these out of the way, and just like the other seaweed things that I did for the minis, I'm going to um, make paint these with an evergreen mica. That's what it looks like. Um, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol to make a paint out of it, and then I'm just going to give them a quick brush over the top with this color, which will give it a nice antique uh, three-dimensional quality, or at least a, a more realistic quality. If you like, you can mix the green with a little bit of black uh, if you want it to be darker. Um, sometimes I do that too. The Sirens and Satellites bars are each uh, quite individual. Somehow they're a bit more individual even than the usual things that I do. That's what it kind of looks like mixed with black. It is a bit dark. I'm going to green that up a little more. Um, and get this nice color out of it. Uh, for the large bars, I prefer a darker color on the seaweed because the large bars are, oh, if I, for lack of a better way of saying this, and it sounds pretentious as shit, and I don't mean it to, but the large size bars kind of tell a different story. Um, Sirens and Satellites is really one of my favorite songs, period, but uh, it, it's kind of a, it's a very dark song. It's it's not, you know, cheerful at all. So I make the minis kind of cute, cuter than, than the, the large bars. The large bars are really super creepy if you know what the song is. Uh, so I like to make these seaweed bits a little bit darker for the large, large size bars. But these are going to just real quick, I'm gonna, oops, gonna bust these out with uh, this mixture of evergreen and black. And as I said, it, this sort of takes care of itself. As long as you brush it in, it's gonna seek it, seek the dark, deeper areas itself and do its job for you. You don't have to do very much to it, except make sure that you actually get pigment on it and that's the end. So these are, these just need this and that's it. And they are done. I'm going to wait for these to dry a little bit, and then I'm going to move them out of the way because uh, things are going to get a little messy when I start working on these tails. So as soon as these are dry and I can get them out of the way, I'll move on. All right, uh, dolls and ghouls and dolls. I'm just going to leave that in, okay? You know, it'll be like Gothica because, uh, see, it's just like Gothica where everything is live and the mistakes just stay there. Alright, now that I've moved these out of the way, I'm ready to work on these tails. Now I have four of them, but I'm only going to show you one because they do take a little bit of time and nobody needs that. So, I'm doing these this particular tail at the request of Casey. She picked the colors. And um, you can make the core of the tail any color you want, okay? Let, let, let's just start here. The tails can be literally any color combination. I tend to make the cores of the tails white and black. Uh, because that's just simplest to work with, but if the Patreon folks want custom colors, they can ask me. If that's a Patreon perk, I will make whatever color tails y'all want. Um, these are just easiest to think of, so it's what I do. But because these tails by themselves are not all that interesting, right, um, for each one of them, I take an X-Acto knife and I uh, just cut them into a more interesting pattern, because they're not very interesting in this way. Um, I like the idea of the tails being um, a bit more dynamic, so I tend to uh, cut them into sort of more interesting shapes. And I do them all differently, obviously. I you know, it's not like I keep track of a pattern or anything. I just do them however I do them. And I also score them a bit to give them the effect that tails kind of have in under those circumstances. 
Okay, so that's that's what we have now. And again, there there is no um, pattern or anything. It's just I make them all a little bit differently. These soaps are uh, SLS free soaps with activated charcoal, which means that they have a weird property. They they tend to get uh, glycerin dew more easily than other kinds. Glycerin dew happens uh, due to humidity. They will get like a like a like a dew on them. It's just the glycerin from the soap. It's not harmful and it doesn't affect the soap in any way. It just makes them a little sticky. Okay, so as I said, Casey picked the colors of this and she wanted teal and purple. Uh, that's what she requested. I'm going to be adding a bit of sparkle to that and um, because Casey is sparkly. But I'm going to pour a little alcohol and I'm going to get started. I'm going to um, first use this my microscope in here. So I'm going to use my uh, amethyst purple which is my go-to purple that I use frequently and I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is give this a bit of a wash on the tail and then sort of just creeping up into here. As I said this is the creative part folks. You can do this is you do you time. You know, this is not a pattern or a thing or something I can teach you, really. This is you just doing your own thing. And um, so, you know, I'm going to show you how I do it, but that doesn't mean that you would do it the same way. Uh, this already has a scale pattern built onto it, which is very convenient. I'm going to, again, give this a wash in this kind of uh, emerald, which is not all that emerald. It's kind of really teal colored. Um, give it a, a wash against the black so we have one color going into another, right? And so there's my wash colors. And now I'm going to add some detail colors. I have this color that I've never really used for anything. I bought it because it was so pretty and then just never really had a use for it yet. Called Orchid. It's a duochrome color. Um, it shifts between purple and blue depending on the angle. And I'm going to uh, just give that a bit of a top coat there. I'm going to brush it around. Add a little more purple. And you know this is all dependent upon how much time you really have or want to spend on on these tails. But the tails are worth spending time on because they are the focus of this bar. And the more work you do with them, the better the bar and more dramatic the bar looks. So even though I am in an incredible rush, I'm being honest, um, and I really should be just flying with these, I will actually take the time to mess with these tails and make them as beautiful as possible because this is just... the, the bar commands a premium anyway because of how much the base costs. Um, and so if people are going to pay a premium for it anyway, I may as well give them their money's worth, you know what I mean? So, um, I have this stormy blue color uh, that I'm going to take up through here. And I have a, a different kind of teal, teal blue rather than teal green. I don't remember what the name of this color is, but it's something. I'm going to hit this uh, top portion again with that, that supposedly emerald that isn't. Right. And this here. Like that. And now, at the very end, um, I'm going to hit it up with this super sparkle. This is the same super sparkle that I use for Atomic Eyes to make Andy all sparkly. And I'm going to hit the ends of the tail like that. Give it a kind of magical appearance, just like this. I'm 
you gotta be careful with this because it will it will brush off if you go too hard so you want to be careful and that's it so this is this is this tail done and I'm gonna do the other three in different color schemes off camera and I will be back as soon as the tails are done all right everyone now comes the hard part we're going to actually pour the soap this is done in a lot of steps and um, because of the limitations on how I have the camera set up, we're going to see how well I can film all of them, but I'm going to give you an idea of what this actually is like. All of these pieces have been painted, they've all been set up, and because again, and I'll say it every time, you have to have all the pieces ready before you start. And um, once you do that, you can spray the mold with alcohol. And I have several ounces of Ultra Clear that are already ready to go. They're already melted. I'm pouring a thin layer of Ultra Clear, not too thick, uh, into the mold. And I'm going to give it a second or two to cool. I really, really don't want this to be very hot. Every one of these pieces is painted. Uh, and because of that, the mica is not fully embedded into the body of the soap. And for that reason, you don't want to put pieces into very, very hot ultra clear because it will pull the mica off of them into a little glittery cloud. And so we definitely don't want that. In fact, it's a good idea to check it with an IR. This is at 137. I'm going to wait until it gets down to 130, uh, which should only take a minute or two because these layers are not thick. Um, and then I'm going to embed the tails. So, 135, we're getting close. Okay, this one is cool. And I'm going to place the tail in, and I'm going to make sure that it is flush against the edge. This is very important, that it is flush with the edge. This one is at... Cool enough. Okay. It's going to want to float, so make sure that it stays in place. Okay. And finally. Okay, this one's a little warm. Hopefully this one doesn't leak too much. Alright. Now that this is done, I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes. And then I'm going to add a little bit more Ultra Clear. Okay, I want the Ultra Clear on this edge, at the edge where the tail ends. And the reason that I want it there is because it's going to act like a glue. Right? Okay. That glue is there to hold the seaweed in place, which is not designed to be flat. It is designed, actually, to do exactly the opposite of be flat, and drape kind of along the back edge at an angle. Because the idea is that it will give it a three-dimensional appearance. Okay, so you don't want it to be flat with anything. You just want to put it in, done. Okay, leaving it alone. Not spraying it with anything. Because if I spray it with alcohol, it's going to move the mica. The key is not to move the mica, right? So we're going to have to be very careful with timing because now we won't have alcohol to use as our adhesive. We have to be sure that things are not completely dry. So for the next step, I have to wait for it to set and add nothing to it until it does. Eventually we're going to have to add alcohol in order to have these layers stick to each other, but for this moment, this has to be the way it is. Don't spray it with anything. If there is a bubble, you're going to have to live with it. The ocean has bubbles. Walk away. Just walk away. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't think about it until this is really, really set. Because the next step is to tilt the mold in order to add the jojoba beads so that they stay along this bottom edge of our okay. sink. Next step in this process is to tilt the mold. This would be a lot easier if I were tilting the mold facing me. But if I do that, you won't be able to see anything, so I'm going to tilt the mold this way and hope that it doesn't become a disaster. Which it could, so you never know. 
I'm hoping not because I really don't have enough, I absolutely don't have enough of the space left to make another four another four uh, four bars. So let's hope that this doesn't turn into a mess. Okay. You're going to add about a half a teaspoon of the green jojoba beads to the bottom edge of each cavity. Okay? I'm doing this with a measuring spoon because that is e the easiest way for me to do it. And I'm just going to take about a half a teaspoon and fling them into the bottom of the mold. Just like this. Ideally, um, I'm going to try to get some of it on the back side of the seaweed bit because that creates dimension in the final product. So this is a half teaspoon. Just going to pour it down into the bottom. Okay. Now, it's not going to stay there. I wish it would, but it won't. It's going to float around, but at least the bulk of it will stay down there. All right. So I'm now going to melt the aloe and olive oil based soap. And before I do that, I'm going to show you again that it has a natural tint. It is not clear. It's got a natural sort of yellow green tint. And we're going to use that to our advantage. Okay. Now that the soap's been melted, I'm going to fragrance it. I'm going to get four shots of vitamin E. And I'm sorry I can't do this actually on camera, but as you can see, I have a tilted mill. I've got nowhere to do that. And as I mentioned before, there are three different oils that go into this fragrance. So I'm going to add all of them now. That's three. Okay, all of the fragrance has been added, and I'm going to give it a good stir, as I will remind everyone constantly. Um, you have to stir very thoroughly when you're adding fragrance oils to soap because um, the oil needs to be held in suspension within the soap itself, and if it isn't, uh, it will create these pits where the oil clings to itself and doesn't hold within the soap and it really looks horrible and it has a greasy, it, it, it's just a mess. So you can't rush. As it turns out, there are a few bits of soap in here that have not quite melted and that's good because I'm trying to bring the temperature down. The thing about this particular uh, bar is that the the problem really is that there's so much mica on those painted pieces and it's not being held on there by anything other than surface tension. And so if you heat up the soap too much, the mica will basically float off of it. If you add to if you add alcohol to try and make the adhering a little bit easier, it will make the mica flow. So this is a, tr uh, a careful kind of balancing act where you're trying to make it so that you're using as little alcohol as possible until that uh, assembly that's already in there is covered by soap. And then you can use as much alcohol as you want, it doesn't matter. As long as it's buried, it doesn't make any difference. But okay, I'm going to use my thermometer and check the temperature because in this case it matters. Okay, I can pour this safely. It's relatively cool. And before I tint it or do anything, I'm just gonna use the natural color that it has and pour a very small layer right into the bottom. It's just gonna pour right to the bottom. And I'm gonna lock in that, uh, 
that color um, those jojoba beads at the bottom of the, the mold because I don't want them to float away as much as possible. And before I tint anything, I just want to lock that area into place. So you're going to go slow. And again, this soap is not hot. And I see that there's bubbles, but I'm going to have to leave those there because I can't spray it with alcohol without pull pulling the mica off of the painted pieces. So this is just one of those things. You can blow on them, though. <laughs> that one was just huge, so I wanted to get rid of it. Okay. Now, you can see that the, the jojoba beads are kind of floating. That's all right. It's not a big deal. What I want to do now is tint the rest of the soap. Okay? And the first layer of tinting, because we're going to do this in stages, is a very small amount of blue mica. It's like not even a, a 15 cc scoopful. It's just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to spray alcohol into the into the pot to get that mixed in and start to give our soap a blue a blue tint. bit of a shimmer. I'm going to then pour again another thin layer, but I'm going to try to kind of get it into the area that's in front of the tail. This is hard to do when it's not facing me. I'm not sure it's doing it. I'm going to hope for the best. Because again, I'm trying to just embed the tail piece in as much as I can so that the mica doesn't get lost when I move the, uh, when I move the, the, the mold again. This one is easier. Let's see from the side. Here we go. I'm just trying to embed the tail piece mostly. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave it alone because it's not quite buried yet. I'm going to add a little bit more mica, and I'm going to, so now the soap is going to actually become bluer. I'm going to give it a, a, a full 15 cc scoop of the blue. And I never want to add so much that it makes the soap opaque. I'm just trying to alter the, the hue of the translucent soap. I don't want an opaque color. And it's all too easy to get. And most of my soaps are really, really opaque. And that's that's a look I'm going for. But in this case, I, I don't want to create that level of opacity. All right. Next thing I want to do is see how well I can move this. Can I move it? Not yet. All right. I want to let this sit for just a couple of minutes until it's not really set up per se, but that once I lower the mold, the jojoba beads aren't going to fly to the top. That's kind of my, my thing here. I'm just trying to keep those jojoba beads in place so that when I flatten the mold out, it's not, they don't just go flying all up to the top of the mold. So I'm just going to let this sit for a couple of minutes and then come okay. back. I let this sit for about five minutes and I'm hoping that it is at least firm enough for me to do this. It mostly is mostly you can see that at the bottom on the bottom ones are kind of leaking backwards that's okay the jojoba beads are staying put so I don't care um, at this point I really need to spray a little alcohol here I don't want to I'm gonna be very light with it but I need to get some adhesion going and I'm going to pour slowly this blue the slightly bluer layer right up to the point where it's covering the back side of the seaweed and I'm going to leave it. And on some of these that's kind of more than others, I, I get that, but it's just the nature of it. It just depends on the angle that 
everything was placed at. I just want to cover the seaweed up. Once the seaweed is covered, that means that all of the embedded pieces are now actually embedded. And that's important because it means that you can, at that point, once it hardens, it kind of sets up, you can use alcohol and um, continue onward to get rid of all this. So I'm just going to do that. And at this point, you can see the color of our soap. This is actually the color that it is, although it doesn't look that way um, because it's poured in such thin layers. I'm going to add another scoop of our, our blue. And give it a good stir. And I just keep making this sort of bluer and more opaque as it gets towards the back side of the bar. Which makes sense because if you were looking at something in the water, things that were farther away from you would be harder to see because the water would have density and then it would become more opaque. So again, I'm going to go slowly. And this is going to need to set up for another five minutes. And at that point, I'm going to come in and pour uh, okay. another layer. The mold is flat now. It's been sitting there for about two or three minutes. These soaps, these um, these detergent-free soaps, take an age to set up. And that's great, because otherwise I'd have to constantly be heating the soap back up. I'm going to add a little more now. Now, this is important. I actually would like some breakthrough. Not breakthrough to the very front layer where the ultra clear is, but I think that that's already good and hard. But I want a little bit of breakthrough on the most recent layer because that's how you get a smooth gradient. If it's too set up, you won't get a smooth gradient and it'll appear like a line on the, on the side of the bar. And we don't want, really want to see a line, we just want to see like some sort of smooth, um, some smooth transition between colors. So I am going to make sure that there is some breakthrough by making sure that the soap has not fully set up by the time I pour the next layer. And this will allow us to have a smart, sort of smooth transition between the shades that we uh, can look at later for visual interest. So you see that one broke through right away. I'm going to fill this up like that. And here too. And the soap again looks darker in concentration than it does when it's in the bar. So that's, you know, something to be aware of as well. I'm going to add just a bit more to this one. I'm trying to like level them out a little. All right, now I'm going to add one more small scoop of the blue mica. this mix. And I'm not really using the big heaping scoops that I normally do. These are pretty small compared to my York normal size scoops um, because I don't want to make the soap fully opaque. But at the same time I'm trying to get more intensity of color as I go towards the back of the bar. So I can spray this with alcohol now, which will release surface tension. And you can see that some of the jojoba beads have kind of floated to the top. That looks so great when it comes out. I know it looks weird now, but trust me when I tell you, it's going to add like this wild three-dimensional imagery to um, this whole scene. It doesn't matter if the direction that the jojoba beads travel this way, like towards you or away from you. It matters this way, from bottom to top, because you want it to stay towards the bottom side um, like the ocean floor kind of thing rather than just sort of floating up, but they're going to float up anyway And what eventually happens is that it looks like the siren's tail has sort of kicked them up into a cloud It looks so cool guys wait till you see when it comes out So these need another like five minutes to kind of set up just slightly and then I can come back and this is what it looks like now So a totally different color than when we began um, I'm gonna let this sit for like five minutes and then I'm going to come back and pour the rest of the bars all the way to the top and then these will be done until they need to be unmolded.
Okay, I have let these sit for about five minutes. And again, I keep telling you, these these detergent-free soaps take forever to, to cure. So using it that, that problem to our advantage in this case, I'm going to pour this last layer on top here, just to fill it up to the top. And because there's like some swirling going on, I'm going to just give this a little bit of a stir to try to minimize that swirling and also to get this piece out. I can say it wouldn't set up forever, but it does take, you know, considerable time. All right. Give that a spray. Stir this up. I'm going to heat this up actually for about five seconds just to give this up. No, maybe I won't. I don't have that much to pour, so. Gonna give this uh, up to the top, okay? And you can see that in this case, this needs to go to the edge, and it's kind of got the consistency like of a gel, for lack of a better way of putting that. More, more like a like a gelatinous kind of consistency at this point. Um, it's it's weird. Like these detergent free soaps are really strange. They just do weird things. I am gonna heat this up for the last two though. I only put it in for five seconds, just because it was getting like a little lumpy and I wanted to get the lumps out. Okay, then a little bit of alcohol. Gonna pour this right in. Get it all the way to the top, and then sort of smooth out the color. this and finally the last one okay. smooth it out and that's that I have just enough for several samples, really, of this. So I'm going to use. I'm going to. I don't normally use do samples of stuff like this, but um, I'll see. I might do samples, or I might just save this. But I probably will just do samples with it because this is just too tricky in terms of colorant to uh, try to save for a new batch. So that's it for these. Um, I'm going to add just the tiniest bit more to this one, I think. Um, that's it for these, and I'm going to let them sit. These take a lot longer to cure. These will take about six hours, and then I will stamp them and loosen them and come back you know, for the I thought I was done, but I'm not. I can't believe I forgot this. I got so excited about being finished that I forgot to add one of the most important parts of the whole thing. So I into this lid, I'm going to spray a little alcohol. This is really important, and I can't believe I forgot it. Um, I have some red, ordinary red mica, like straight red, and into this I'm going to add at random, basically random spots, I'm going to stick some red mica in here. And I definitely want to get it down so that it's visible. And if I had thought of this at the right time, I would have done this like two layers ago, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. And I kept thinking, it feels like I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? And that would be this, you dumbass. So I'm just going to keep basically making this sort of mica paint and then shoving it down in here. I can't believe I forgot this, but this is why we do these tutorials, so that you see me fuck up. For real. That's why they're there. They're there for you to watch me screw things up. It's like watching a car crash at a, a, a car race. You know, everyone's only there for the crashes. So. Alright. 
There we go. Perfect. Okay. The story is that these are not mermaids, guys. They're sirens. And, I mean, the name of the soap is not, you know, The Little Mermaid. It's sirens and Satellites. And if you understand the, the song, you understand the fact that there, there winds up being dead people here. So I forgot to put the blood in the water. So now that I've added the blood in the water, which I really hope is visible from the front side, um, I'm going to be really sad if it isn't because that's like an important part of, of this look. Um, I will uh, pick them up after they're cured and then we'll really see what they look like. Alright everyone, um, it's been about six hours since I poured these. Uh, we have a lot of humidity here today and they just have been refusing to release for quite some time. Um, I have loosened them, although you're going to see me fight with them anyway because they are real sticky. Um, and stamp them, but we're going to make a fair attempt at getting them out of the mold. They are technically done, but like I said, it is real humid here today. And because of that, they are just fighting every step of the way to come out of these molds. These detergent-free soaps are... They just have a totally different texture, and any kind of humidity or whatever makes them really fight with you to get them out. Because they're soft, and they just, they don't want to release. Okay, this one's coming now. Hot damn. Okay, I'm going to take this one out of the way so it doesn't get uh, damaged while I try to get the next one out. Because, like I said, it's going to fight. It's not even warm out, it's just that it's so humid. Number two. I'm kind of bummed because all the blood that I put in the water isn't really showing through very well, even though I put it on the back. But it's okay. I just got to remember better next time. Okay, this one's coming. This is where a silicone mold would be useful. These molds are not bad. They're pretty heavy duty and they don't cause me too many problems with unmolding. This is just a combination of the day being so humid and the fact that these are not normal glycerin soaps. Okay. There you go. And there's the fourth one. And you can see, like, the no matter, even though I mixed it, that the, the blood part didn't really seep down. It's kind of on the back, which still sort of tells a story, but it's not quite as dramatic as the way I planned it. That's okay. Nobody's going to care. It all these look gorgeous. Um, so let me put them all. So you can see them all at once. There we go. So these look great. The only um, minor issues with these, uh, which I can fix, this is just an artifact of the fact that it is so damn humid. There we go. That silvery, you see how it's silvery here? That's because it was trying to split. But if I press on it, you'll notice that the silver goes away. It's just, um, it's air. And if you just press down on it and give it a good shove, it will uh, seal more, more firmly. This is because of the layers and my fighting to get it out of the mold. Um, 
you, you know, cause it to uh, try to want to separate the part with the layers. Remember, we didn't have alcohol for those first couple of layers as an adhesive. So they, the fact that they fought so hard to come out of the mold meant that they were trying to split right where those layers meet. But it's not a, it's not a big deal if you just give it some pressure. It will uh, alleviate the problem. So I hope that you enjoy these. I'm really sorry that I didn't get more uh, blood in the water on the front side. That's bumming me out. But you know what? They look beautiful anyway, and they smell great. And um, the next time I will remember. So uh, until next time, uh, goths and ghouls. That's it for me. Bronx out. Drown again, oh drown again, you'll be my gift to Okay, so now that I've gotten the shipment of supplies in that I need, I can continue on with sirens and satellites and work on the large bars. So in advance, I've prepped these. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Yay, bloopers.